Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to my channel. Uh, in this video, I wanted to share with you some tips that I learned from my Hajj experience that helped me to have a more pleasant and organized experience. Um, now, of course, these tips worked for me, but they may or may not work for you. So definitely take them with a grain of salt and uh, try them out. If and if they work, great. And if not, uh, let me know what else, what other things worked for you for your experience, so that we can all know about it and all learn from each other's experiences. Uh, so without any further delay, um, I'm going to get right to it. So tip number one is definitely to make sure that you are wearing the right types of clothes and shoes for the purpose. So that is uh, the, the purpose for the clothes would be that they need to keep you cool and covered at the same time and also that they are long lasting, they won't tear, they won't uh, get damaged by any excess use. And uh, the purpose for the shoes obviously is to help you and support you uh, in long, long walks, and, and not chafe you, not make your feel not not make your feet feel tired. And I can tell you uh, that I was surrounded by <clears throat> so many people who were not wearing the right types of clothes or shoes, and it was giving them a lot of grief. And it definitely did not contribute to their experience being the best that it could have been. Um, tip number two is to take along with you a small spray bottle. Now I talked about this during my uh, packing videos as well. So this is the one that I took with me. It's fairly small and um, I would use this a number of ways. The first way that I would use it is uh, when I was outside, especially in the heat and we were walking a lot, I was getting hot. I would spray this on my face. So just spray some water on my face, especially on the back of my neck. And then I would use this fan that I bought from Bin Daoud. It just comes in a tiny little packet. I, I believe it was 10 rials. Uh, so this is very a portable, nice little fan that connects directly into your phone or a battery bank or basically any kind of USB port. So um, I would just connect it to my phone and then while my face was wet, uh, from the spray bottle I would just use this fan to help dry it off and so what this would do is um, it would dry off the water which is great but it would also create a cooling sensation which is extremely extremely important um, in making sure that you stay active and energized uh, during your long walks and exposure to your to the sun the other time that I would use the spray bottle uh, quite a bit was actually to perform wudu. So um, right before prayer time, the bathrooms get packed. Everybody wants to perform wudu and they want to get back to their tent or camp or wherever uh, in time for the congregational prayer. So at that time, the lineups are long. Uh, you're, you're standing for quite a while for your turn. Uh, people are getting impatient. People are being pushy. Uh, you might be standing outside in the sun waiting for your turn so in order to avoid that what i would do is that i would just use the spray bottle to perform my voodoo wherever i was whether it was in my tent or it was in the mosque even or you know wherever i was i would uh, just use the spray bottle to refresh my voodoo and uh, so i wouldn't go to the bathroom right before prayer time what i would do is that i would time my trip to the bathroom so that i would go after prayer had ended and that's the time when uh, there was the least amount of lineup at the bathroom, sometimes even no lineup at all. So I was able to go and go out and just do whatever I needed to do ASA uh, as quickly as possible without um, losing any time or losing any excess energy standing in line and not doing much. So that was extremely helpful, again, to have a spray bottle on hand for this kind of thing. Uh, the other thing with the bathroom that I would recommend is to take along with you a water bottle as well as your own soap. Um, and so the water bottle would be so that if you don't want to touch, you know, the taps or, or the pipes that are in the bathroom, um, then you can use a water bottle definitely to um, clean yourself up. So that was also a pretty handy thing um, that I would do. Um, Moving on to tip number three, uh, that would be to get yourself a battery bank. So a battery bank, this was very helpful because uh, especially when we were in Mina and Musdalifah, even though there are quite a few 
power outlets in the tents um, there are way too many people to use those power outlets so again if you want to charge your phone you have to basically wait in line till the people before you have charged their phones and disconnected their chargers from the electrical outlet so in order to avoid um, being at no battery at all um, and still waiting to charge your phone um, you can just uh, charge your phone using the battery bank and then uh, you can that way make sure that you're always connected and you're not without you're not going without a phone um, so that was actually pretty helpful too uh, tip number four applies to uh, people with longer hair men or women whomever so during the state of ihram um, it is advised that we don't brush our hair that we don't that our hair shouldn't break off of our heads um, and so that can be really hard if your hair is up in a ponytail or if it's just um, uh, loosely tied up because the hair can tend to open and then you have to tie it up again and then you you are at a risk of losing hair or breaking hair so uh, what I did that was actually very very helpful um, was um, anytime I was in a state of ihram for Umrah or for Hajj I would just have my hair up in a French braid or a Dutch braid and these braids are really good because they are meant to keep your hair uh, in control and in place and they last for a pr pretty long amount of time if, if they're done properly so uh, that was a really good way to make sure that I wasn't losing any hair unnecessarily during the state of ihram so definitely try that one out and maybe practice some French braiding before you go so that uh, um, you have the skill on hand uh, ready to go when it's time. Tip number five is to carry around some snacks and a bottle of water with you basically every time you are outside. Uh, um, and I cannot uh, again emphasize the importance of staying hydrated all the time um, because it's very easy to get tired so water makes sense obviously it makes sense to go around with water but with snacks it was important too because um, you may be faced with a circumstance in which you are surrounded by somebody or, or multiple people uh, who are uh, who are um, getting tired or they are de-energized or um, the heat and the walking and the physical exertion is just getting to them and they need that boost of energy so this would be sort of serving as a perfect opportunity for you to earn some extra blessings and if you are able to share with them a granola bar or some trail mix or some dried fruit that would uh, help them go a long way and then would, you would also definitely be getting a lot of blessings uh, yourself um, even if you're not consuming the snacks yourself. Um, tip number six is definitely an optional one <clears throat> and that is to purchase um, prayer mat with back support. So these we were able to find in the marketplace in the basement of the clock tower in Mecca. Uh, these were a pretty handy investment because um, we were able because of the back support we were able to spend more time at the, at the mosque when you know we, we would stay there after prayer or go there early and um, there aren't a lot of comfortable places to sit in the mosque obviously so having this prayer mat with some back support was incredibly helpful because we were able to uh, take our time and relax and focus on our worship or whatever it is that we were doing at the mosque rather than f getting tired uh, way too quickly because our backs weren't supported properly so uh, these were a good investment. The other reason why these were really good was because um, uh, the prayer mat itself is very soft and very comfortable to sit on. So there were quite a few opportunities in which I was able to just, you know, lay the prayer mat flat completely and just lie down on it for a, a few minutes to take a qu quick nap or just take a quick rest. And that was really helpful as well, especially when we were out in Musalifa. Uh, that this came in pretty handy because there was no place to sit and you have to spend the whole day there so um, it was good to have some back support for sure uh, tip number seven would be to go and talk to your imam about any questions that you may have about Hajj or Umrah or 
state of ihram um, what i found with my experience was whenever i was trying to research um, the question of an answer online i would find conflicting opinions uh, somebody would say yes somebody would say no and that leaves us in a pretty confused uh, position where we're not sure which one we're supposed to follow and so what me and my husband did was any question that we had we would just take it directly to the imam in our group and whatever he would recommend we would just go with it because we trusted him and we trusted his knowledge and he has been doing this um, uh, leading um, Hajj groups for a number of years so we definitely place our full trust in whatever he recommended us so um, the prime example of this is um, covering of the face now during Ihram uh, it is advised not to cover our face um, uh, but I really wanted to wear a medical uh, face mask so that I wouldn't get sick by all the people around me so I went and asked the imam about it and he said that if it's for a medical reason it's completely fine so I was pretty comfortable with what he recommended and I did in fact wear my face mask throughout the entire trip that I was there in Saudi Arabia from the beginning to the end I had a face mask on I, I even slept with my face mask on uh, especially when we were in Mina and again the entire idea behind that was to make sure that I wasn't uh, getting sick from all the people around me and um, it actually really helped out because I didn't fall sick till right uh, at the end basically on my last day is when I is when I fell sick whereas everybody around me who wasn't being so careful about face masks and germs um, they all got sick two times maybe even three times during their uh, two-week trips so um, uh, that was really helpful and um, uh, it kept me healthy and it uh, made me more able to focus on what I needed to do as well as take care of the people around me which is a huge part of our Hajj experience is the is the you know making is making sure that people around us are comfortable and we're taking care of them and then we are trying to do our best to help them have a good experience so so yeah that was that for me um, uh, a quick note on the face masks though if you are planning to wear face masks uh, they are very very helpful very useful they they work um, as long as they are not wet so if your face mask gets wet because you, you drop some water on it or just because you were sweating, just throw it out and wear a new one. They're very cheap. They're available in big boxes uh, in Mecca and Medina, basically wherever you go. And so I would always carry around a few extra face masks with me in my bag um, in case the, the one I was wearing already got wet. I would just change it out and make sure that I was protected all the time. The other thing that I all, that I um, had to talk to my mom about that I wasn't sure about was uh, the use of flavored toothpaste. Um, again, my mom said that it was okay to use flavored toothpaste, so I was pretty comfortable with that. I went ahead and did it, but at the same time, I also know people who who, who used only miswak while they were in the state of Ihram, and so you know to each their own, whatever they're comfortable with. Um, uh, and that's that I'll just leave it at that um, tip number nine is to use eye masks and earplugs um, while you're there so um, during your entire trip you may be in a room with people that you are not familiar with you may be meeting new roommates uh, but definitely during Mina you are a hundred percent surrounded by a bunch of people that you that are not necessarily your friends or your family um, so in that kind of situation it's very easy to uh, lose sleep because uh, people are turning on lights or turning them off at odd times or somebody snores or somebody has a cough and these kinds of noises and disturbances can uh, create you to 
create the situation where you are not getting the best sleep the best rest and that can actually have a pretty bad effect on your mood on your mental uh, well-being on just generally how you feel about everything so it is very critical to get that rest but it may be hard to get that rest so uh, using eye mask and using earplugs was definitely a savior for me um, uh, because it kept out uh, uh, extra noise it, it kept away any disturbances from the light uh, turning on and off and I was able to definitely get some rest uh, whereas I know that a lot of people around me were having difficulty with sleep uh, because of all the constant disturbances that were happening around them so that was definitely a very very good decision and I would highly recommend this one um, my last tip is uh, less of a tip but more of um, an advice about you know state of mind uh, during Hajj the, it, it is really more than anything else more than the physical exertion more than anything else it is a psychological test um, and it's a test of our suburb so um, as I said earlier people are tired they're not getting enough sleep they're out of their comfort zones they're doing things that they haven't done before it tends to make people pretty impatient and it tends to make them do things that they wouldn't normally do in a regular uh, on a regular basis and so these kinds of things can start piling up and get frustrating very quickly and it is uh, Hajj is all about being patient and showing sabr and you know not giving in and just keeping your keeping your cool and letting things go um, so that is definitely an important thing to remember because it's going to get very tempting to to say something to someone but you it, it's better to bite your tongue than to ruin your Hajj experience for one or two persons right so um, again supper is the key thing uh, for your Hajj experience on that same note though I would say that if you notice something um, unfair or unjust happening around you and that shouldn't be happening uh, don't be afraid to raise your voice and um, let people know that they need to stop doing that uh, because sometimes people just get so caught up in whatever it is that they need to do that they'll forget how they're affecting or influencing the people around them so the example I have for this is um, in front of the elevators in the hotel lobby now every time a prayer would end there would be massive chaos in front of the elevators because everyone wanted to go up to their rooms at the exact same time and so you have hundreds and hundreds of people just just piling in front of the elevator doors and they're basically it's a race to get into an elevator and it's quite it can become quite challenging and so um, uh, what I witnessed over there was this one incident in which an elderly man was getting pushed around in the crowd uh, in front of the elevator and um, people weren't even noticing that they were pushing him around and that he was in danger basically of getting injured and so I noticed that and um, and I knew that nobody would uh, let, let him go um, he wouldn't be able to cross the crowd easily so I had to pretty much yell at everybody uh, to you know stop doing whatever it is that they were doing and then show supper and then let people go before they let people exit the elevators before they rushed into them and so um, me yelling at the people kind of shocked them they weren't expecting it um, it wasn't something that um, that they were particularly happy about that somebody did but it was an important thing to do because um, it made sure that the elderly man had an opportunity to leave without getting hurt and um, I also noticed afterwards that people were being a little bit more careful about making sure the people inside the elevator left before they started filing inside so you know if you see something like this and if you can and you are confident in your voice raise it and you know let people know that what they're doing is having a negative impact on other people uh, but other than that, if it's something relating to you yourself personally, a lot of times it would just be way easier to just let it go and um, just
just let it go. <laughs> That's really it. Um, but this is it for now. Uh, these are the tips I had for you. Um, may Allah, I sincerely pray that uh, may Allah make your journey easy and accept your Hajj and your prayer, prayers and all of your efforts. And uh, if you have any specific questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to respond to you as quickly as possible. Thank you again for watching and Asalaamu Alaikum.